Yep, I got it, Randy. I, I got it. Testing. Test. Hello, this is Paul Drever, recording from from deep beneath the Earth's crust in the Drever Vision Panic Room, reporting for Propagator News. Randy and I, my camera assistant, uh, we took refuge down here. And let me tell you, folks, it's not too pretty up there. The bombs are dropping, the dams are collapsing, peoples is dying. Well, apparently, some left-wing terrorist group calling itself the Resistance has hacked President Ed 501's mainframe, and and he's just gone ballistic. You know, the whole world's falling apart up there. And you know what I think? I think bull roar. I think it's just uh, malfunctioned. He's he's darn gun blown a gasket. <laughs> And you know, I called this. Ed and I have a long history together. We used to uh, co-host a show back in the 80s. Uh, maybe you remember it. Uh, Tomorrow Day, great show. Hey, Randy. He was always prone to, to malfunctioning. And I knew from the start, you know what, Randy, run the clip, run a clip. If you're just joining us, I was describing what I think video games will be like in the 21st century. century. However, my mechanical co-host, Ed501C, was being a bit of a doubting Tombot, weren't you? I do not mean to offend, Paul. But uh, what is it? You seemed skeptical. Is it because I said that in the future, video games will fully envelop you with 3D holograms and smell so real you can smell it? No, Paul, that all makes perfect sense. Is it the direct brain interface? Is it the IV drip filled with glucose and adrenaline? Is it the pelvic seal designed to, to catch urine and feces? Hey, you're gonna be plugged in for hours, Ed. You're gonna have to go sometime. This is real science. I just can't see parents buying a gaming device which punishes the losing player with potentially fatal electric shocks. Come on, Ed. Did we not talk about this already? I'm sorry, Paul. You're gonna make me look like a damn fool in front of all the, all the future people. And they are watching. Always. Of course, Paul. I have big plans for my career, Tin Man. And by the time the future men see this, I'll have a reputation to uphold. So don't blow it for me, all right? Sorry, Paul. I mean, uh, think about this example. We all know that flying cars are coming in only a matter of years, right? Of course, Paul. Can you imagine how foolish we would look to these Futurions if, mm, Futurions. Note to self, time pirates from the future drain Lake Michigan in an attempt to secure clean water and resell it in the future. The film will be called Futurion. No, 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 Hydro Futurion. And it will star a, a, a brooding Burt Reynolds uh, or myself. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to my agent. Anyway, imagine these Futurions of the future, tuning into a classic rerun of Tomorrow Day on their uh, flat television units and hearing us announce that flying cars will never exist. We would look like fools. Exactly! Here we are, denying the existence of flying cars. Meanwhile, Xenon Jones and the family are planning a trip to, to, to Venus later that afternoon. Please excuse my friend. Citizens of Tomorrow, he is only a machine. He exists only to serve. And he lacks a human soul, a heart. The ability to ever touch or feel or experience happiness or love. It's a sad story. People of the future, I'm sorry. You right, Paul. I thought your prediction of a lethal gaming device for children was absurd. But I should really learn to open my mind. <laughs> well, it's not really a, a mind in the true sense, <laughs> but I respect your envy of my humanity, Ed. Apology accepted. That's very big of you, Paul. May I see some more of your designs? They are quite enlightening. Well, I really don't have uh, any other any other designs. This is uh, just the, the gaming console from behind. Paul, what is that glowing red art? Oh, <laughs> that. Uh, that's the fuel source for the system, a moon rock called an Energon Ruby from the planet Galactron 12, a planet we won't discover for at least another 20 years. At least. Why? Are you skeptical, Ed? Do you have some doubts you'd like to express? No, Paul.
So there you have it. That cool box of bolts. He's always hated mankind. He's always hated me. Jealousy. That's what that is. Envy. The computer that thought it was a man. The machine that thought I had a soul. You know, I would look at me. You can see it. You can see it in the tape. He, he's got his eyes on me and he's, he's envious. He sees a man in front of him with a beating heart. A man capable of love and hate and joy and, 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 and he's jealous. He wants what he can never have. And I used to, I used to laugh at him <laughs> on commercial break. I'd say, you'll never have this. You'll never have this. You'll never have a heart. <laughs> and I was just trying to, trying to, you know, zing him a bit, hurt his feelings. But well, the joke's on me, because, you know, a computer doesn't have feelings. <laughs> oh, Ed. You're watching me, watching.